I've been building in Framer for over two years now, and there's a bunch of useful and magical tricks I wish that I knew sooner. So to save you some time, I'm gonna teach you my top 10 tricks for Framer in this video. Let's go. So the first trick I wanna show you is how you can copy and paste effects. I wish I knew this a lot sooner because it kind of annoyed me when I figured it out because I realized how much time I had been wasting. But essentially, let's say I've got some text here that I want to fade in on uh, appear. What I can do is go to effects, I'd go to appear, set the trigger to be layer in view, and then we could say it might actually slide in from the bottom. And I'll just set some settings here. So we'll set the offset to be 100 and we'll make this a bit smoother, right? So when I preview this, you will notice that the text fades in. All looks really good. Now, what I used to do was have to kind of duplicate that for each section of my site where I'd want to reuse that same effect. However, Framer is really good because what you can do is just right click and then go copy and then go copy effects. And then I can select another frame, so maybe this one here. And then I can just paste that effect. And you'll notice that effect is just being pasted here like so. So it's actually really straightforward to build effects in Framer and then just copy and paste them across where you want to use them. So now I've pasted that a few times. I'll preview my site and now you notice at each one of those sections, it's going to fade in just like so. All right, trick number two is knowing how to export things from Framer. Now, quick hint, this is only available on the actual desktop app. You can't do it on the web, unfortunately, but I use the desktop app for Framer anyway, so it's really not an issue for me. But let's say I designed something in Framer and I want to export it, whether it be as a PNG, JPEG, whatever, what I could do is actually select that frame that I want to export. So let's say I want to export this hero section. I'll scroll down on the properties panel to the right hand side and right at the bottom, we've got export. And just like Figma, I can set my export to be to the certain scale that I want it to be. And then I just have to click on export and I can save that as an image on my computer and that's it. Really handy feature to know. Okay, so number three is canvas pages. So often you might actually be trying to build something in Framer, but you don't actually want it to appear on the website itself. So similar to Figma, you could just actually create a canvas page and you can design anything here. So on the left hand properties panel, we've got our pages and then underneath that, we've got a spot for canvas. And I can click on this and you'll notice it's pretty similar to a page in Framer, but you'll notice it's not actually a, a page. So we get, this is literally a freeform canvas. I can kind of do whatever I want here. And there's a few extra different like fields and stuff that I actually have access to here as well. But I could actually design graphics, logos, anything I want on this canvas here. And then when I'm ready to actually pull them into a page, I can do so just by copying and pasting. But again, the real trick here is that it's actually not a page in Framer, which means it won't appear on your published site. Okay, so tip number four is to utilize the workshop plugin, which is a free plugin by Framer. Uh, and essentially it lets you build code components inside of Framer with AI. So essentially you vibe coding, which is really cool. So for example, if I wanted to create an animated clock, I could write in my prompt here, then just click on create. And essentially what it's gonna do is actually start creating this code component, which I can use anywhere on my website. So we'll let that generate for just a second. So let's paste this into our website and then let's actually preview this. So you'll now notice that we've actually got a clock that's actually working in real time because it's currently 2.20 p.m. in the afternoon here. And this is a just a component inside of Framer so I can tweak all the stylings and everything in here too. Or if I wanna make a change, I can just directly ask it inside a workshop. Really handy and a big game changer, especially if there's something in Framer that you don't know how to do or want to do but may not be a feature, you can just build it with Workshop. Okay, so next is text and color styles. Now, essentially a text and a color style is a global style that you can reuse over and over on your site. And because it's global, it means that if you update it in one place, it's gonna update everywhere. So for example here, let's say if we took our sort of heading text here and we wanted this to be a certain color, I can click into my color tabs here and you'll notice that we kind of have all these sort of like preset colors set up already. And these are color styles. So for example, if I want to create a new style, let's say I wanted my heading here to be a bit of a purple, right? I could select my purple color. I could click on new style and then I'll call this, we'll call it demo purple. 
and I'll click on create. And now you notice I've got the option to pre-select that demo purple at any time. So let's say I selected the text underneath it. I could also select that color. And then when it gets really powerful is when I say edit that color to any other color, you'll notice it'll update all instances of that color because it is a global color. Now, for example, on my site here, I'm kind of using this lime green. So I could actually edit this color and we could say, make that our purple. And you will notice all throughout the website here, wherever I'm using that sort of like lime green color, it's actually going to update to the color of that color style. And then the other thing is text styles, which works very similar to color styles. You can just create a new style here. And then there's a lot more options with text styles, uh, but essentially it's the same thing. You can create a text style and that's gonna be a systematic design decision that you use across your entire website. Then again, if you decide to change it later on, maybe go through a bit of a rebrand or whatever, you just need to update the text styles and it will update everywhere. Okay, so trick number six is scroll section. So let's say I had a section on my website that when I click on say a button or a link, I wanted to automatically scroll to that section of the site. So for example, we have this sort of pricing section here. So what I could do is actually select that frame and then inside my properties panel, I could scroll down to the properties panel on the right hand side and click on scroll section. And now I can give this a name or an ID. So we'll call this pricing, just like so. And now we kind of have this little icon that appears next to that frame, which means it's got a scroll section attached. So now when I go to set a link on, well, anything, so let's go into our nav bar here and click on pricing. What we can do is actually set that link to go to the home page. And then once we actually select the page, we've got the option to then select the section of that page. So in this case, we want it to go to pricing. So now when I actually preview this, I can click on pricing and it's going to automatically jump me to that part of the page. Now inside my link settings here too, if I want that to be a smooth scroll, I can just set that to be smooth. So now when I actually preview this again, click on pricing, you'll notice it will smoothly scroll me down to that section of the page. Okay, so trick number seven is actually adding filters directly to an image inside of Framer. So here I've got an image selected. Now on my properties panel, if I go over to styles, if I click this little plus here, I actually get a ton more options. There's a ton of things to play around with here, but let's actually look at filters where I can add things like a blur, a background blur, I can change the brightness, the contrast, the grayscale, and so much more. So for example, if I change the grayscale here, you'll notice we'll get a new option. Then I can actually just change this slider and you notice I can actually change whether it be completely black and white or full color or somewhere in between. So there's actually a really handy way of manipulating images just like you would in Photoshop or another platform, uh, all directly inside a frame. So typically what happens is you use components a lot in each project and you tend to get a lot of components that you are using. So in order to manage this, we can actually create component folders. Now this is really simple to do. So all you need to do is actually select and open the component that you want to use. And then we'll actually go and rename this. Now what you want to type first is the name of the folder that you want to use. Whether you've created this or not, we can just give it a name. So we might call this Ryan, uh, Ryan work. And then we're gonna press forward slash and then followed by the name of that component. So when I actually click on enter here, you'll notice that inside my components project, uh, if I scroll down here, we'll actually have a folder, which is called Ryan work, which is up the top here. Then when I open that, we've got our new folder with that component inside, which is called card. So we can go quite deep with this too. So for example, if I wanted to go a step further, I could go uh, Ryan work uh, forward slash uh, work in progress forward slash card. And then you've actually got yet another folder. So this can be really useful, especially if you're working on bigger sites to keep everything well organized. Okay, so trick number nine is around staging. So usually when you publish your website, it's just one click to publish. But if you go to your site settings, and this is only available on certain 
paid plans, but essentially you can enable staging, which essentially allows you to have a, well, staging domain for your actual website, which will be a .framer.website domain. Then you can push all the changes there first to actually check what that looks like live on the internet before you publish it to your main domain. And alongside staging, you can actually have ver version control. So let's say you push something live and then you realize, oh no, this has broken everything. You can actually just roll back your site to an older version, which is super handy. So for example, on our frame of form side here, when I go to publish, I had first actually push this live to staging and then wait for that to update. And then I'd check out that staging domain, make sure it all looks good. And then I actually go to production and then push those changes directly to my main domain. Okay, and lastly, tip number 10 is drafting pages. Often you're working on pages that are not ready to be released, but you still need to ship updates to your live site. So what I can do is actually select a page, go to these three dots here and press on draft. And this means this, pro this page will only live inside a framer. And when I publish my site, it won't be published, which again is really great for when you're shipping updates, but you're not ready to ship every page just yet. And then my top 10 tricks that I use every single day inside of framer. Now, hopefully there's been one or two that you've been able to take away from this video and go on, oh, I wish I knew that sooner because all of these, I wish I had known sooner at some point. But if you enjoyed this video and you want more Framer content like this, consider subscribing to the channel because we're putting out new Framer videos every single week. And if you want more Framer goodies, head to insertframe.io. But until next time, I'll catch you later.